Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarice. We have no spoilers, but we do have our thoughts on the Batman, because we get nerdy nightly. And we thought we'd share it with you. That is right. Our spoiler chat for the Batman is going to go live at 11 a.m. on Saturday, March 5th. But we want to give everyone else time to see it. Not everyone gets uh, has access to like a fan screening like we got to go to tonight. Uh, but we're really excited to talk about this movie because we've been anticipating it for a long time. Yeah, the hype around it has been, you know, uh, well, really interesting to watch, I think, especially because of who they decided to cast as Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think people have been like really watching this to see... Uh, like we know, Robert Pattinson has done other things. Um, good time. That well, that have a lot more weight to them. But good most, time. Most watch good time. Most people just know him as Edward the Vampire Guy, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so <laughs> I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone knows him as Edward the Vampire Guy. At least one person does. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I think that also like this casting choice has kind of put a lot of eyes on this movie. Yeah, there's been a lot of Battinson conversation. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And I think that uh, to start the review, to actually talk about the movie itself, I think that Robert Pattinson d- does a great job. I think that yeah. anyone who wants to compare this to his performance in Twilight, and I actually think he does uh, a, a good job in the first Twilight movie. Mm-hmm. I think those movies get rough, um, but I think <laughs> the first one has a lot of interesting independent stuff going on in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I do think that Robert Pattinson will, will be remembered more for this movie than he will for Twilight within a couple of years. Yeah. It's a pretty iconic performance. I think that it is striking. It is very different from every other Batman that we've had to this date. Mm-hmm. And I think that he, uh, and honestly, the whole cast do an incredible job in the film. Yes. Yeah. Solid all across the board yeah. for every single person involved. Um, like, honestly, tr- like, truly an incredibly talented cast in this movie. D- down to even some, like, some of, like, just, like, the side characters. Mm-hmm. I don't mean like side side, not even like the penguin who is a side character in this, but mm-hmm. I mean like there's a, there's this one cop that keeps reappearing and I, I haven't pulled up his name, but I, I want to learn it because he's really good in the movie. Yeah. And he, he has one movie. He has, he has a scene with um, Batman near the end of the film. And I was like, I really like this guy. Like he's good. Yeah. He's given his all. And he the, showed up the, but while everyone is great, there are definitely some standouts. Uh, I think that the, the the standout of all standouts in this movie is Zoe Kravitz. Absolutely. I think that she is far and away uh, the, the, the heart of this movie. Mm-hmm. And part of that is because she's the, she is the character who has empathy. She is the only one that can feel love. <laughs> uh, uh, well. <laughs> the, uh, that is capable of even portraying anything that resembles anything close to love. In a positive way, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. I, I, I just that. mean that every everyone else in this movie is so cold. It is very dark. It is yeah. very dour. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, uh, Colin Farrell as the Penguin is a remarkable transformation. Like, I kept waiting for him to slip into Colin Farrell. He's the guy from In Bruges, right? Yeah, and yeah. he's in the first Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Colin Farrell is an incredible actor, and yeah. Uh, but I've never seen him like this. I've never, I've never seen a transformation quite like this. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. If you had told me, if you, if I didn't know going in, it was him. At no point would I have figured it out. No. Right. No, like not even a little bit. And the what they have done is done so flawlessly mm-hmm. that you, th- it, it seems just like it, it is a real person that exists. You yeah. know, like there are um, times in makeup jobs where you see it's makeup or you see it's mm-hmm. prosthetic, and and you see the work that they've done, and and that doesn't diminish it. But this is just like I- impeccable. Every detail is. Uh, paid attention to and um, it, it's really immersive because it looks like just it that is what that person looks like it <laughs> yeah there's one scar uh, across his face yeah. and the way that it moves looks real the whole movie yeah even though it shouldn't yeah it, it yeah. should look like a prosthetic that is a little stiff and it just never does it looks like skin yeah. it's wild yeah uh, well also done. John Turturro um, who I got to meet many years ago and is just a fantastic fantastic <laughs> dude uh, he is just remarkable as Carmine Falcone. Mm-hmm. Like, he... I it, It's hard to talk about anything that he does in this movie without spoiling yes. things about the movie. Yeah, and we're not doing that. But I was really struck by how... I, I, by him. I was struck by how much his performance reminded me of Adam Sandler in um, the Softy Brothers film Uncut Gems, or as the internet calls it, Uncut Gems. 
Um, but yeah, he 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 took it to a level I've never seen from John Turturro before in this film. Mm-hmm. And I, honestly, like if if you were like, who would you nominate for best supporting actor from this movie? I would give it to John Turturro for Carmen Falcone. And it's it's not a, it's not a huge role. It's not, but like mm-hmm. God, he is so good. Yeah. And it's such a departure from, like, if you only know him from the Transformers movies, like, th- this is grade S. If, if we're making a tier maker list, he's giving S S-tier. tier acting. S tier. And he has scenes with a lot of characters in the movie. And I th- honestly think that everyone is at their best when they're in scenes with him in this. Mm-hmm. And he he stepped everybody up. And I was I was really impressed with John Turturro, the whole film. I loved yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, really well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, one person who I thought I was going to have a, a, a bigger attachment to was... Um, Oh my God, Gollum! Um, oh, Andy. Serkis. Andy Circus yeah, is yeah, yeah. Alfred, uh, yeah. who just isn't in a lot of the movie. No, he's really not, unfortunately, yeah. because I think he's great when he is there. Yeah, he's awesome. And yeah. uh, the the thing is, everybody's great. Like we can yeah. just be like, oh, everyone's awesome. But like, um, everyone is awesome. He just doesn't have a lot to do, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But I think it was intentional on the part because the 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 theme of this movie is really about isolating Bruce. Yeah, and. I mean, to even call him Bruce, if he's even Bruce. He's not he's, even. He's, the Bruce Wayne in this movie does not exist. Yeah, and Bruce. He is Batman. <laughs> like, Batman is fully formed, and Bruce Wayne is a work in progress. And I think Bruce that, Wayne is a twinkle in Batman's eye. <laughs> like. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, I think that you know, I, I I definitely think that the plot of this movie leans heavier into Batman has like fully lost himself within the idea of Batman, mm-hmm. and. We'll talk a lot about the end of this movie in our spoiler chat. Yeah. It is hard to get into why I think this movie is really, really excellent without, without spoiling, spoiling the end of the movie. Of course, yeah. Because the the end of the movie justifies the film. And if the yeah. last moment of the mm-hmm. film, and we talked about this in the car on the way home, if the last moment wasn't what it was, mm-hmm. not quite the last moment, if the third from last moment wasn't what it was, the entire movie is a waste of time. I agree. The entire movie is a complete waste of time. Yeah, it has like a, a, a literal pin that it hinges on. Yeah, and, um, and it swings from that pin so perfectly, like Spider-Man just like getting that perfect arc, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that because of that, Disney Park. all of the dourness and all of the grim and the, 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 the overly long, if I have one, I have a couple of complaints about this movie, but if I have one big complaint, long. there is a bunch that can get cut. There, there is a lot in this movie that is there for tone. Yes, and, and it's so much. Like, we get it. Daylight mm-hmm. doesn't exist because then Edward will start sparkling. But, um. <laughs> but there, there's a lot in this movie that's there for tone, but the tone is never in question. No. And so I did, you don't need more tone because yeah. the, uh, we, you, like, the film is so yeah. rooted in one thing theme and one to- like just one saturation one setting yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so much so that Orange. when there are televisions on in the movie they're so bright it's in the theater weird yeah, yeah. and you know like <laughs> if you don't like having um headlights or flashlight flashed in your eyes don't go see this movie in theaters um because it's but you wouldn't aggressive. notice those headlights if it wasn't pitch dark for an hour before it and then True. suddenly there's a headlamp and True. you can literally watch the audience go, go oh god <laughs> Every time. Every, oh, yeah. I hate, I hated it. It, like, actually hurts me. I, 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 well, you have very sensitive eyes to that. I guess. Yeah. I just, I hate, when, I hate <laughs> when they do that. I, like, like you said, it is just jarringly noticeable because mm-hmm. everything else is very, very dark. Yeah, and, and interestingly, like, like, actually dark. Like, it's not dark like a Zack Snyder film where it's been, it was clearly shot and then desaturated. Yeah. This no. movie very much looks like it is... And they probably color graded it down a little bit, sure. but there's there are large chunks of this movie where there are very few light sources for the action that is happening, and the light sources that are used are so clearly intentional yeah. that the darkness feels like the darkness feels like production, not post production, as opposed to something like Zack Snyder. Justice League or or Batman v Superman, where or or especially Man of Steel, right? Man of Steel looks. You can just if you've ever vi- um, edited video in Premiere or any other yeah. service, literally you like know that saturation knob. Oh yeah, yeah. If you've seen Amy Adams in real life, she doesn't even look like a ginger because yeah, her yeah. hair looks like it's 
like gray brown. But and I don't mind that. I I, I like the it's effect fine. of Zack Snyder's filmmaking. Yeah, 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 it's fine. This doesn't have that same quality to it because no. when there are colors. In this movie, they are so striking. Well, and the orange of and everything is orange in mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah. Uh, you have like the the sunrise and the sunset. Yeah. You have the flashes from guns. I mean, and that is very evident even in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, you have e- even a lot of the um, there's like lights from like sparking electricity. Those are like orangey yeah. and blue. Um, and they compliment like, Zoe Kravitz's skin tone. Oh. So she looks so good the whole movie. Oh my God, yeah. I actually, it's funny. I did a photo shoot where the photographer used this like blue and orange mm-hmm. kind of like, and, and like those photos very much remind me of the, the color whole palette movie. of yeah. this whole movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be talking with Zoe Kravitz in this movie for a very long time. Oh my gosh, um, she's... Particularly one moment that I will not spoil right now, no, but no it's like... She's so good. Um, also, if you're a comics fan, if you're a Batman comics fan, there's a lot of stuff they pull for this that's like deep lore that I was really impressed by and really enjoyed. But never anything that takes away if you're not a comics book person because there are things that I like wouldn't... Oh, yeah, yeah. No. I, I, you know, I wouldn't like clue into, but the story flows so seamlessly that like that it's never a problem. So don't yeah. worry if you're not like the hardest Batman fan. It, it, it's not stuff that like... It's stuff that is just world building yeah. that they've done in the comics that the previous versions of, particularly the Catwoman, have ignored about her character in order to like make her like cat that whatever the movie version of Catwoman was. This is the most comics accurate version of Selena Kyle we've ever gotten in a film, mm-hmm. um, by far, right? Uh, except maybe like Batman sixty six Catwoman, just because the comics were like that at the time, and so like right, right, okay. I, I guess that was comic accurate, but. In terms of, like, since Batman 89, this is far and away the most comics-accurate Selena we've ever had. And mm-hmm. I really appreciated the little things they pulled for that. Mm-hmm. And the fact that, like, her poverty is still such a big part of her character to um, pair her against Bruce Wayne yeah. as Batman. And the the dance of those two things, her coming from poverty and her coming from him coming from privilege play against each other in the relationship in such a beautiful way and in the way they like communicate with each other yeah and that that their their relationship is so central to the success of this movie to me and uh, they're fantastic the one actor we didn't bring up who i think is the backbone of the film if if selene is the heart then gordon jeffrey wright as commissioner or as lieutenant gordon in this Mm -hmm is the backbone of the film by far. Mm-hmm. He carries you through the film, and I said this to you in the car, but yeah. his commitment to the existence of Batman on his, on like his team makes you buy into the fact that any of this is happening with Batman involved. Yeah. And if Jeffrey Wright's performance wasn't in the movie, Batman would feel silly, but he yes. never does because Gordon, like... You just you're you're on board. Yeah. He gets you on board, and you're stuck on board throughout the entire film. Yeah, he sells it like he is really like an essential key uh, to 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 this world, how it exists, and like Batman's uh, role in it all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Because like Batman is not personable at mm-hmm. all, um, and and you know, and Gordon believes in something, and and. One thing that I did really like about this film that had me worried at the start Mm -hmm. was how much room it leaves for whatever's next. Because there's definitely more stuff in the works. Um, No Mm -hmm. spoilers, but, you know, they don't... This isn't a done and, like, tidy Mm -hmm. storyline. There are plenty of avenues left open for future Robert Pattinson Batman movies. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it was a, I think it was a strong choice for them to start where they did with all of the characters and it leaves a lot of room for growth and for change, Mm -hmm. um, which it makes me excited, honestly. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. I think that this sets up a, a version of Gotham that is just, you know, 1987 New York city. Um, but a version of Gotham that there's so, there's so much to play around in. It was a little tough, honestly. Uh, I can't even say that. I'll say it for the spoiler chat. There, there was, there, there is. I, I will say this. I want to say something before we end this review. Mm-hmm. If you have not yet seen the movie and you are thinking about going to see the movie, mm-hmm. and you are at a place right now where the real world and the reality of what's going on in the world right now is 
if you feel like you're emotionally near the edge right now in terms of like wanting to sit through something dark and and maybe something that's going to emotionally affect you because of the situation in the real world the batman might be one you want to wait on yeah and i yeah that is nothing i want to be very clear it is not about the quality of the film yeah it is about the fact that this is a grounded real world take on batman and because of that the third act can feel real world in a way that might be emotionally triggering for people who are just kind of feeling it right now and I want to just be really honest about that because I think that there are going to be some people who walk into this movie this weekend and have a really bad time for the last half hour. And rightfully so because the world is messed up right now. And and, and I think that it is totally valid and, and, and totally understandable to have that reaction to it. And I, I, I don't I don't want to downplay that, but I do want to warn people that there are elements to the end of this movie that might feel a little bit much at the moment. And that it, it, if you if you need to wait on it, it's okay. There isn't a lot that you're going to get spoiled on anyway. There's not a lot to spoil in this movie. It's true. Um, yeah. Weirdly, if Batman weren't in the movie, it would have played out almost the exact same way. Uh, it has a little bit of a Raiders of the Lost Art quality to it, but <laughs> I will explain that on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I had a tough time with this movie. Um, and but you liked it. Yeah, and like... Or, think it's good no i do i do like i i like i have a lot of positive things to say about this movie i do have some criticisms and i can't really be um i I don't want to be specific here because this isn't a spoiler chat and i want you all to be able to go into this and experience it for yourself um because there's a lot there there's a lot there to experience but yeah it um it feels very real at Mm -hmm. some points um and so just make sure that like you're you're in an okay space to be mm-hmm. able to handle that. Um, because yeah, because it's a lot and the world fucking sucks right now. So Yeah. Um thank you for dropping the F bomb in the YouTube video. You're um welcome. that's my job. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Matt Reeves is the director of this one. We I can't believe we got to this point in the review without mentioning his name. Um uh and uh Michael Giacchino wrote the score. Uh they both they, they crushed it, honestly. I think that this movie is 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 a lot. And it's very long. And there are long. some chunks of it that could be cut. Yep. But having said that, this is clearly the vision that Matt Reeves had. And it's a vision that I I, I'm, I, I love in a, in a way. I don't, I don't think I liked it. Uh, I, but I love it. Does that make sense? <laughs> no. I, I did not leave the theater like, wow, that was a great time at the cinema. I kind of left the theater like... I feel miserable right now, but I just watch art. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's 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 a, it's a really it's a really well done movie. I think it's it's impeccably made. It is intentional all the way through, and yet, I it, I I mean like I'm sad. Yeah, and, <laughs> I'm sad about humanity. No, a hundred percent. And like I found it like distracting just for a moment that like sitting beside you was like a ten year old. Yeah, there was a really young kid next to me, and she was struggling. She, she, like, she, she I, I felt bad for her because she bad. was. This was this movie is a lot, yeah. and it's long, and like it, it's not your kid's Batman movie. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's one scene with a body part that really freaked her out, and it was like kind of near the beginning of the movie, and I just it, from then on it did not seem like she was having a good time, yeah. and that it was I was trying to ignore it because I wanted to have my experience, but I was like. Ma'am, like, your daughter is too young for this film. Yeah, yeah. This movie's was... not for kids, like, no, at all. No, and, and the, the, like, I don't know, the wildest part to me is, like, go, like, screen it first. Yeah. Especially with the trailers where they are. I, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm telling anyone how to fucking Someone... be a parent. But, like, I just, it, it was, like, I was, like, that that child is uh, is uncomfortable. Yeah, someone said that this movie was, like, if someone made Saw for Disney+. Plus, and... I couldn't get that out of my head watching the film, and I was like, "Yeah, kind of." But like, if someone had like an incredible budget, and well, if someone had ten times saw budget, and... well, th- that sounds more like a dig, and it's not like I, I don't think. That no, that no, that I just mean negative. like some of the horror, like some some of yeah. the look. I, I'm going to be really yeah, honest yeah. with you. the The Riddler, the Riddler, like moments. There, I've seen reviews where people are like Paul Dano is the scariest villain Batman's ever had, and he's really not because. There is there can't be blood for PG thirteen, and so like there are elements of it that are like 
there there are some times where you're like, oh yeah, saw for Disney Plus. I understand like what they're talking about. Well, yeah, I, I get that, and there are like silly things like Batman is literally invincible, right? It, Batman is so durable that it becomes kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, like honestly, the the impenetrability of his suit mm-hmm. becomes funny at a certain point. Yeah, you're like, how are you still st-? like? Yeah. 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 Which is fine. I think that. Uh, th- but that was my complaint about the trailer, right? I yeah. complained. I was like, why is his suit 100% bulletproof? Yeah. And people were like upset with you. Yeah. And, and then uh, watching the movie, it made me chuckle a couple of times. Yeah. You're like, this is, this is he, absurd. There, he takes like. You were like. Com- it- he takes like rifle rounds point blank to the chest yeah. multiple times. Mm-hmm. And he just is like, boom. And you're like, you're what? What? Yeah, yeah, and you were like, if they wanted to make a Man of Steel movie, just make the Man of Steel. No, I said no. <laughs> if they wanted to make a Steel movie, oh yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Steel is Steel is um his suit gives him invulnerability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, if they want, if you no, want to make Steel, just make Steel. But like, this is Batman. He doesn't need to take rifle rounds to the chest at point blank range. Like, and that's yeah. the stuff that pulls me out. Yeah, and but... that's that's the stuff that, in a sense, feels like Disney Plus, right? Mm-hmm. It's the like the hero is feels like not actually in danger in fights like that yeah yeah batman yeah i wish that batman felt a little bit more unsafe yeah batman has a lot of like personal flaws Mm -hmm. but like absolutely no physical flaws just he has emotional trauma not physical trauma yeah exactly it's yeah well and there's just there, there is one thing that happens in the middle of the movie batman survives an event that makes the rest of the f- that takes the stakes out of the rest of the movie for Batman, and yeah. thankfully the stakes are for everything else are really high, and the acting performances are so good. Yeah. And I think it's why the beginning of this review, this very long video, I think it's why the Sorry. beginning of this was all about how good the acting was because yeah. that's what sold the movie for me. A hundred percent. Batman, in terms of Batmaning, is a little silly at times, even though the suit is incredible. But yeah. the fact that it, the fact that he just gets up and walks away from things that you're like, what? Literally how, yeah. And then there just is a point where you're like, oh, well, Batman's not in danger because if he's nothing fine. can hurt him, then he's fine. Yeah. And the, I, I do wish that he wasn't invulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, it would feel... Yeah. The, the, the ending would have been yeah. more the, I would have been more on the edge of my seat if I ever was worried for Batman yeah. but the middle of the movie deflates the idea that he's ever in danger of actually being hurt by yeah, anything yeah. He is, he's literally never and so I wrestled with that honestly like if, it, my, if if I were to rate the things I don't like about the movie it's Batman's vulnerability how long it is yeah. and how bad the Riddler's riddles are yeah, yeah. That's it. Those and are those, my those are my three complaints. Yeah, I think that, that those are all th- those are mine as well basically like mm-hmm. you know um yeah, but those are three. Those are three things, and I think that I have like a host of really great things to say about this and oh, a thousand percent, the yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of character that it portrays and the you know political comments that it makes and mm-hmm. and and how it this movie sets is, up a world. This like, <laughs> this movie is like actually politically woke. You know, not not like re- I I don't and I use the word woke ironically. I'm yeah. saying like the the woke thing that people complain about online is actually the politics of this film. And yet I don't think that anyone is going to use that word to describe this film because it has a white lead. Yeah. But there are, there are more woke politics in this than in, like, than in Captain Marvel. Yeah. Like, real, real, real deep, like, left politics. Mm-hmm. But because it's Batman, that tag is not going to be stuck on this film. Yep. And people aren't going to complain about it because it's done really well. Um, yeah. This movie also, like really uh tries to hold up a mirror to a specific kind of person Mm -hmm. and i have a feeling most of those people are not gonna notice we'll talk about that on saturday if you want to hear our spoiler thoughts come back saturday morning 11 a.m that video is gonna drop Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i think that overall i what would you rate the film like what what, what's your like out of um what's a good number for us to do out of 10 what out of 10 <laughs> i was like are we going with the completely random number no only stupid answers does, i don't know if they still do it, but they used to do a thing where they would rate out of a random number and then they would try and figure out a letter grade based on that number and they would like do math live i don't like math well so. but they were terrible at it and that was the joke Great. um but yeah well, out of 10 what'd you give it uh i this might change mm-hmm. i feel like i might sleep on it and 
and feel differently because I, there was a lot in that movie that I am still processing. Fair. So, fair, fair, fair. you know, I'm going to... But we'll give, re-rate it on Saturday. Yeah, I'm going to give yeah. myself a little bit of wiggle room here, but I think, like, I would give this an 8.5 out of 10. Interesting. That's wild. Usually I'm higher than you, but I would also... I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah. I give it an 85. I think that the, the Rotten Tomato score 85%. is, like, right around where I would give it. Yeah, yeah, I'll give yeah. It an I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, honestly... Honestly, without changing a thing about the plot or anything, it could have been a nine plus easily by being like 30 minutes shorter. Yeah. It, it overstays its welcome just enough that like, yeah. I felt drained when I left. Yep. And like, if I could have watched this at home with, and like gone up and gone to the bathroom, maybe like, you know, taken a break at one point, I, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Like I enjoyed, cause that, Zack Snyder's Justice League was four hours, but we watched it in three chunks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This movie is long enough that I was like, I, I, yeah, I left a little drained. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot, and no. it, and you know, and and not all that's necessary. No, no, and make sure that you are make sure that you are ready for that when you no. go and see it. Yeah, don't drink before um, and get a drink at concession. Start drinking it about like thirty five minutes in, and then you should be good until the end of the movie. Great. Yeah, I had a beer during the movie. It was great. Nursed it for two and a half hours. Well. <laughs> I drank a little faster than that. I'm sure you did. Uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. Come back Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for that spoiler chat. If you don't like this video, understandable. Uh, there's a dislike button. You it's, can't see the dislikes, but we can. I don't know why you dislike this video, but uh, sure. Somebody will. Uh, somebody always does, because there's always there's one person there's always one who person. dislikes every video within like five minutes of it going up. Yeah. Uh, you can also Thanks leave... Thanks for the engagement. <laughs> you can leave me in comments down below, because the algorithm god is hungry. We must... Feed her just like Selena has to feed all those dang cats. So a lot, so, of, food, a lot yeah. of cats, and I'm so allergic to them. I just like those scenes. I was like, oh, uh, wow. You her can cats are adorable. Oh, adorable, but I'm still allergic. The cuteness of the cat does not change my allergy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Follow me over at Nerdy Nightly, basically everywhere. And I'm over at Kalaris Polaris. <laughs> I just launched my Patreon. So you can Patreon. Check that out. Kalaris Polaris Patreon. Well, there's a Nerdy Nightly Patreon, so like. You're going to go sign up for her. Take your pick. Do something nerdy tonight. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.